who deserved what happened to them, but you still felt bad. Might be a little late, but here it goes. A couple of years ago I had a soccer ball that a kid stole from me. He said it was his, and he found it. Well cut to a couple of weeks later I went to the park, and that kid was there, playing with my ball. Then, some homeless looking person walked to where the kid had his stuff placed, and stole his bag. I saw everything that happened. I still feel bad for not doing anything but, to be fair he did not return my ball, after I asked many times. Karma sub asterisk tch david. Edit, forgot to mention he had his wallet and phone and the bag. Back a long time ago growing up in Eastern Europe, before the Cold War was ended, I had a friend who kept getting into trouble, vandalism, stealing from stores, drugs and more. He had been arrested two times, but kept thinking he can get away with it. This was back when the farm pit punishment was still used for some crimes. Basically where you're locked in a pit on a farm for a day or two, and the dung of the animals on the farm is shoveled in as well. I warned him that he better stop, because he's sure to get the farm pit if he's caught again. He seemed unconcerned and laughed it off, and said something like so what, it's just a day or two, I can deal with a bad smell. I said are you kidding me? Have you even been to a pig farm before? You do not want to go to the pit. But he was undistressed. Sure enough he was caught shoplifting a few months later, and spent half a day in the pit, and later told me how much he puked, and how sick he felt. I warned you buddy. When I was 19 this guy asked me on a date. I said sure, he picked me up, and he said that he needed to make a stop first. We go into his house and a bunch of guys are literally weighing and bagging up weed and coke in the living room. I was shocked. Apparently my date was a dealer, unbeknownst to me. I was scared, so I just sat there quietly. He ends up saying that we should just have dinner there. So we got into his furnished basement where he had a bar and gives me a hard lemonade. As the time passes, I say I want to leave, and he forced himself on me, and held me down, after I kept saying no. He tried to take my shorts off. I literally sprinted out of his house, and ran a few blocks, knocked on a stranger's door, and asked to use their phone, to call my mom to come get me. Two years ago, I read online, that he just got a job in waste management. He was hanging off the back of the garbage truck, when the driver reversed it into a metal telephone pole and crushed him. Sad he went that way, but I couldn't help, but say karma is a bitch. My sister's ex is a bastard. He always said she was too fat and there were prettier girls than her. He also took her to Paris, when my parents disagreed. We found out later, that she didn't even have a passport with her. He threatened to throw fireworks at our house if my sister wasn't allowed to come to a party. She was 17 at the time, so my parents were still in charge. The worst thing he did was get drunk behind the wheel. When my sister said something about it, she was given the choice, either walk 20 to 30 miles or get in the car with him. He had an accident after getting drunk behind the wheel and he is now in a coma. There is a good chance that he will not survive. I'm very sorry for his family, but I'm a little happy that my sister was not in that car. I was in elementary school kicking a ball back and forth with a couple of buddies when the school bully comes over. At this time he is damn near the size of a teenager and I'm a super scrawny stick. He boots our ball all the way across the playground. My buddies accept the fate, but it causes me to snap. I call him a bitch, a bold move for quite little me. He doesn't take that well, grabs me, turns me upside down, and slams me on my head. I pop right back up, and get in his face. We repeat this several times until a teacher finally sees this, and breaks it up. Fast forward to our senior year of high school. He is a real big dude at this point. Still a shithead. He's talking shit to a Samoan kid we have a school, very rural place of mostly backwards white kids. Starts getting physical with him. Samoan kid is probably 5 feet 6 inches at best, but Samoans don't have a reputation for being badasses for nothing. He grabs this giant, turns him upside down, and pile drives him into the tile floor. Bully goes completely out, ambulance had to be called, and he gets stretchered out. We didn't see him again for several weeks. No one says shit to Samoan kid, because he was a super chill kid and everyone, including the adults, knew how awful the bully was. Saw the bully a few years later, and the incident seemed to knock the asshole attitude out of him. He was very cordial. 
I feel guilty about how much glee I get thinking about this poor kid, who most likely had a bad home life, getting dropped on his head so hard he had to spend time in the hospital. He cold been seriously hurt. Throughout ages 5 to 14, I had a best friend who slowly evolved into a spoiled, entitled bully. Whenever her mom told her no in the last years we were friends, she would say stuff like I hope my mom gets cancer I hate her so much. One day her mother just died. Turns out she had cancer. I still think about her sometimes. Edit. Jesus Christ. I'm not saying the mother deserved to die that's fucked up. It's more of a well. You got what you loudly wished for multiple times. I felt very bad for her. She didn't deserve to lose her mom and her mom didn't deserve to die. Her mom died a couple years after I cut contact with her. Not when she was that young. I worked as a designer in a marketing firm. There was a social media coordinator, while a fantastic worker, wasn't a team player, and would coerce designers, to focus on all his clients. It escalated to the point he'd get angry at us, if we don't meet his self-imposed deadlines. He'd overpromise his clients about projects, which put unnecessary pressure onto our team. I found out, that he lived alone in a bad neighborhood, was barely able to pay rent, and only made $12 an hour. I felt bad, so I put up with it. One day, he started piling projects only onto me, because he didn't trust the other designers. The workload got so insane that I snapped, and told my boss about all the things this employee did. Apparently he was already on thin ice due to numerous private complaints. I felt like a total ass, that my complaint was what broke the camel's back. However, he got fired the next day for not joining a white elephant exchange, and preferring to focus on his work more. He also vocally complained about not wanting to spend $30 on something stupid. There is a happy ending, though. One client loved his work so much, that they stopped our services, and hired him as their dedicated social media manager, so that worked out for him. On a side note I also got promoted for good leadership on Mayo. This is gonna sound stupid but, I was once married to a man in an online game. He was great. He was nice, smart, popular, and had a really level-headed temperament that didn't allow him to get angry easily. This is important, because there was a lot of player killing in the game guild enemies, and just overall drama. We got along really well, and realized we were both laid back people, but also similarly competitive in game. So, we got married in the game. This does provide benefits in game, and he was even nice enough to pay for it. I really enjoyed playing with him as he was a very dependable guy, and also had the skill level to match. There came a time, when we hung out less and spoke less often. I can't remember why, but we were both still active in game, and one day I logged on and he had divorced me. It feels silly to say, but it hurt my feelings a lot, and I felt kind of betrayed, abandoned. He hadn't even given me a heads up. He immediately leaned me to say sorry. Apparently he had been hanging out with another girl with fox ears, and they had been back quote flirting with each other unbeknownst to me. Shortly after, him and fox ears got married and everyone wished them well, because he was still a likable popular guy. I was really upset, but it wasn't like we were a couple in real life. I wasn't attracted to him at all. So, whatever. Lost my best friend in game, but life goes on. Some time later, Foxiers divorced him out of the blue. It was the same story of what just happened to me, except this time it happened to him. She had been talking to another player, they exchanged photos, and she found him to be more visually appealing than my back quote ex-husband. So she left him, and remarried the new guy quickly, and my back quote ex felt like shit. After that happened to him, I thought that he 100% deserved it, because that's exactly copy and paste, what he did to me. Perhaps he realized this, because he then sent me a long apology message with a small hope of remarrying me in game. I promptly rejected it, since I was young and still feeling hurt over his actions. But now looking back, I do feel bad for him, because I think he's a great guy and maybe that's just a young mistake. But I expected more integrity out of my friends. I dunno. I told you it was gonna sound stupid lol. This lad called a no, that I knew growing up. He lived on a state near to mine. He was an absolute cunt, did street robberies, khaki burglaries, bullied the younger kids round the area you name it he did it, just a 24 carat brick. 
there was a pub that was kinda riven between the estates we lived on, which was known for drugs and just generally being rough as fuck. About 10 years ago now, I know was in the pub pissed up giving it the big un to everyone, until he started fucking with blokes he didn't know that were minding their own business, who after about 10 minutes of arguing with Anno just got up and left. Anno continued getting Larry, so my missus at the time wanted to leave, to be honest so did I, because it was obvious glasses were about to start flying, so we left. Well it turned out, that those blokes Anno had been fucking with definitely weren't the kind of men to play games because about one. Five hours later, when Anno got kicked out of the pub and was is in the car park, they ran him over with a car, reversed over him then one of them jumped, put stabbed him about 15 times according to a newspaper article I read about it. Anno was a complete prick and an all around waste of skin, but he was only 19 and nobody should die the way he did. My boyfriend's mother lives alone in a huge house because her husband divorced her and all her kids moved in with him instead. She's a narcissist and doesn't understand why everyone did this to her when she put her kids first and did everything for everyone. She's actually a fucking psycho and so abusive. She invaded the privacy of all her kids by listening to phone conversations, looking through their therapy journals, reading their texts, tracking their phones, and following them whenever they went somewhere and would sit in the parking lot or the driveway just watching them. She smashed their things tried to frame one of his siblings as a sex offender, nothing happened, hid her ex-husband's medication, so he would die, stole dollar sign 25k from him, and somehow got all of his new wife's records from the police to basically stalk her, and hold a domestic dispute charge over both their heads, I don't even know if that's real. And every time we have a party she throws a fit about her ex-husband and his new wife and the party gets so uncomfortable so fast. Yet my family, and I still feel bad, that she's in that house alone. Sometimes we worry she's going to get depressed, and do some bad shit and guilt the kids about it, particularly my boyfriend. So I get very worried, even though she totally deserves to be alone. I remember many years ago that kid, around 15 or 16 yo, who developed a fame of a reportionist burglar. His father knew of it, so he managed to get him a job in a farm trying to make him better with an honest job few weeks into the job the owner's brand new c15 went missing he eventually found out who stole it so being mid 80s in the spanish countryside the next logical step was to show at his house and beat the shit out of him until he confessed where he was hiding the van i go to small university in somewhat rural pennsylvania u s and the girl posted a picture with her black dog with the caption this is the only n asterisk 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 that I won't lynch it got spread throughout the university and eventually the university said she wasn't welcomed and removed her from admissions. Her family ended up deleting all social media accounts. Best part is the girl was going to be an art education major K-12. She was going to be a teacher. Did she deserve to get kicked out of a university and destroy her family's lives? Yes. Edit, the girl's family deleted their account, because of backlash from the girl, I do not condone the hate given to her family, and I do feel bad for the family, but not the girl in question. It's a January evening, and I'm driving home from work during a blizzard on the hills, that border England and Scotland. The driver in front, is doing 30 miles per hour I'm hanging back at a safe distance. The guy behind me is 5 foot back from me. Suddenly he passes at high speed followed by two other cars. They tear off into the distance. Five miles later we pass them, in a ditch piled into the back of each other. All three drivers are out there the cars close to blows. We gently pass at 30. I arrive home safe 20 minutes later, and order in a curry. My ex-mother-in-law, contracted a rapid form of brain cancer. In my opinion, it was karma for the massive head games she played with everyone around her. All about what she could get out of a person. I feel bad for the victims of her more than her dying. She fucked up all three of her kids so bad, none of them will ever lead productive lives. And her daughter's kids are ending up the same way. I'm determined my kids will be good society members, and my ex-brother-in-law's GF ran away with his kids after 4 years of domestic violence. She and I still talk once in a while. She lives a few states away. I had an ex-boyfriend who was mentally and physically absurd. He was a narcissist with no empathy, who took genuine pleasure in others' pain, and I still carry the scars of what he did to me inside and out. 
He died of an odd living alone on the streets about 5 years ago. I'll be honest I felt that his slow descent into addiction and homelessness was really just karmic justice. I didn't keep tabs, but I still knew some people in his social circle, but maybe that was a bit too far. I had a friend who constantly made fun of me for the things I had, because my parents were very strict, like my parents had put restrictions on my phone. He also made fun of the people I hang out with that are other than him, etc. I confronted him for it, and he kept on saying it was just joking and stuff. Eventually he stopped, but the year after, all of a sudden people just kept on making fun of him for the things he hadn't did, like how he had a tutor, but was still dumb, just silly stuff, and he constantly told people to stop, and that it wasn't nice and my other friend kept on saying that, if it is such problem why did you do it to me? I felt like he got a taste of his own medicine, but I was quite sad to see him down all the time. Had a classmate who was a pathological liar, always claimed he had a black belt in taekwondo. During a community day, someone brought a sparring dummy to demonstrate some martial arts. After the demonstration, I overheard heard my classmate brag to a couple of adults about his black belt, and he proceeded to attempt to do a spinning kick on the dummy. He barely grazes it and busts his ass on the floor and he tries flip himself up only to bust his ass a few more times 